So for today, we're gonna be doing an install with this big old box from Paragon, which is the Civic Type RFK two-piece brake rotors from there. And also, I got the Paragon brake pads as well. I'm gonna get that installed on this guy. So Paragon Brakes, they've been out since 2014 and pretty much they are dedicated on supplying high quality performance brake products such as brake kits, rotors, brake pads and other accessories that deal with brake components. So although it seems they were established back in 2014, they have over 26 years of experience in manufacturing and machining and just to point out paragon brakes actually sponsored two separate events uh, one event was with the civic type r and also with the civic si the famous 25 hours of thunder hill so with the many years of experience and high quality products you know i had to get my hands on these especially if i track the car very soon so let's go ahead with the install. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Now for today, I will be installing some new brake pads and also different types of rotors. And these rotors, uh, it's one of the best ones out there right now if you are racing your car. So with these rotors, it is a two-piece rotor. Now, uh, if you own a 2017 to, I think it's 2020, uh, Civic Type R FK8 uh, it came with a, a one-piece style type of uh, rotors and I'll get a little bit more detail later on in this video to you know tell you the difference with a one-piece versus a two-piece rotors but for now I'm heading to my boy Anthony's house to do the install because he's uh, done many work on his FK8 a few years back and stuff but uh, that will head down to his place get this brake pads and rotors installed and uh, you know show you uh, how it's done yo that's pretty crazy it was like sunny just a few minutes ago and then now it's all foggy I'm gonna take out my shades look at that it's all foggy now So we got Anthony here pulling up the rotors out of the box. Uh, as you see, there's two boxes. Uh, one is for the left, one is for the right. Once you verify all your parts is there, you remove your wheel. And as you know, the Type R has five lug nuts. Is it MSI too? Yeah. Is it MSI? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone do it yet, but I've only seen photos of it. That's pretty cool. So what we have here is Anthony removing a couple of screws and it is common for it to be jammed up if you haven't replaced your rotors in a few years. Now in a situation where that screw cannot be removed, you got to use that drill and don't worry it does not damage the uh, threads. We're just trying to remove that screw because actually with the new rotors it doesn't even need it. Since we had slight difficulties removing that screw, we went with the next step, which is removing the two pins on those calipers. Once the pins are out, you can remove the brake pads. Now it might be slightly hard to pull it out. There is actually a tool, but you can use a, like a flathead and separate it. So as you can see, Anthony went back and tried to remove that screw that was jammed. And this was actually interesting. Check it out. Check it out. Watch, watch, watch. Oh, yeah. What size was that? Anyway? What's up? What size? Was uh, that? 19. 19? Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So a size 19 socket head was used to remove the caliper. So instead of detaching all the cable lines, the brake lines from the caliper, the best thing to do is use some zip ties and just tie it up at the top so it doesn't interfere with what you're trying to do. And just like that, rotors come out. Now it's time to install those new rotors from Paragon. Look at those slots. Damn, that looks sick. So here's how it looks on the back side where all the connections and hoses, all that fun stuff. We got two bolts that hold on the, the caliper to the knuckle. Okay. And they're both 19s. And then you should also take off that 12 millimeter that holds the hard line in place from moving. Okay. Just so you don't worry about like risking bending the hard line. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to accidentally kink the hard line. So now we have Anthony installing the brake pads, but before we put the brake pads on, we add some type of grease material on the back side of the brake pads so we can install those shims. Make sure you bend these in properly. All of those? Okay. Mm -hmm. I kind of wish these shims had like tabs that held it in place because mm. it's a lot easier to get them in and line it up. Now remember, you have two brake pads, so you gotta put two shims on. I wonder if these are gonna make sound because these aren't uh, like the OEM ones. Yeah, they might make sound. <laughs> are you ready for that? Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. So yeah, you want to try not to touch that with your hands, the What's it called? The, um, the brake pad itself, so you don't get like any oils or grease on your hands. Uh, I mean, it's not like terribly bad for it, but like, you just try not to. So the next step is to get those two long rods to put it in between the caliper and brake pads itself. So yeah, it's a little tricky. You gotta line the holes together. And last but not least, you hammer it from the inside, going to the outside to make that rod come out. And there it is, the final product, new rotor, new brake pads, ah, beautiful. So before we install the other side, let's take a quick look how these rotor looks like. See, as you can tell, it is a two-piece rotor. And uh, yeah, check it out. See, I took it out of the wrap here. You can see the slots in them. Looking clean, looking nice. Here, I did a side-by-side -side with the OEM brake rotors and yeah if you look it's a one piece versus the paragon two piece yeah buddy it is a little lighter versus the oem so yeah you know and what are you using like brake cleaner just yeah it's brake cleaner. okay just cleaning, it, or just cleaning it off in case i got like grease or anything yeah okay yes as the old saying goes liquor up front and poker in the rear. No, wait, well, yo, yo, no, I meant what you do on one side, you gotta do it to the other. And last but not least, don't forget to torque those wheels so your wheels don't fall off. So that completes the install, but but you need to break in these pads and especially has new pads and rotors. There's a little procedure that you need to do and that's what we're gonna do right now. So according to Paragon Brakes, uh, it is required to do the bed in procedure is what it's called. And uh, the steps basically is you drive for about 30 to 35 miles per hour and then you break moderately to five miles per hour. And you do that about, I think, uh, six to 10 times.
once you complete the 30 to 35 mile per hour testing uh, six to ten times I did it about eight times and the next step is going up to 45 miles per hour and slowing down as well to five miles per hour so you do that about two to three times Now according to Paragon, uh, that's pretty much all you have to do for the bed and procedure, uh, but it does uh, recommend to cruise about 45 miles per hour uh, for about 10 minutes and then after 10 minutes uh, inspect your rotors, make sure there's even, um, you know, brake distribution around the rotors, no, I guess, odd markings, things like that, uh, but after that you should be good to go. Damn, bro. Damn, but look at this RSX, sweet. Hey, that's Anthony's. All right, so it's been a little over 10 minutes. And let's take a look at the rotors here. We're just basically looking for some even distribution when braking. Like nothing odd, no chips, stuff like that. They look fairly good there. Let's take a look at the other side. Looking good as well. Even distribution. Basically, like you can see, like these little scratches and stuff. Like you don't see any bald spots or something, something odd and weird. But yeah, it looks good. Hey, awesome job, Anthony. Awesome job. Oh yeah, check out this bug. He said, "What's up?" Hey, he running. Oh, hit the wall! Hit the wall! He's going up. Is he, is he gonna make it? Nah, he gave up, he gave up. All right, so installation is complete. Uh, to me, it looks wonderful. I do have to drive it a little longer just to you know get more of a better feel for it. But let's talk rotors a little bit. So why upgrade the rotors, especially if it was a one-piece solid style rotor? Well, for these Paragon, as you notice, it was uh, had slots. So with slotted rotors, it releases more of the heat uh, out of the rotors. So when it's rolling, driving, when you're braking, it dissipates the heat much quicker. So it doesn't really overheat. Now with these Paragon rotors as well, you notice it is a two-piece rotor. So what that means, it was manufactured in two separate ways. And by doing this, it actually is lighter than a solid one-piece rotor. So, you know, weight uh, is very important, especially when, when you're on a track or racing. The lighter the vehicle, the quicker it can go. Now with the heat as well for a one piece rotor, there's a issue with temperature. So if it gets way too hot, the rotors actually will start warping because it reaches about 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. So it gets really, really hot. So when you have a two piece, at least the heat is dissipated much quicker, not causing so much of a warping image or warping situation on your rotors. And last but not least, cost savings. Now cost savings, you would think one piece rotors might be cheaper versus the two piece, but no, in the long run, the two piece rotors will be cheaper. Why? Because you actually only just replace the inner part of the two piece of that rotor. So the inner part is replaced will be actually cheaper than replacing the one piece rotor on, uh, on the normal style uh, rotor. So in the long run, you gotta remember long run, long run. Yes, the long run, the two piece rotor will be more cost savings versus the one piece rotor. Now I have collaborated with Paragon Brakes to give you guys a special discount as well. 
So if you spend $500 or more on your next future purchase, you will save $50. So uh, I will provide a referral link down below, but also make sure when you purchase a combo such as brake rotors, brake pads, and also the shims for your vehicle. And they, they have a lot of makes and models available for any vehicle almost, but just check out their website. Um, and if you include all this bundle, you actually may save an additional uh, cost of savings. Uh, I'm not sure. It just depends what makes and models. Just make sure you put all in your cart. But once you, uh, before your checkout, it'll show you all the discounts that you actually might get free things such as the shims, which is normally priced $60 or so. And if you have any questions, leave it down in the comments or you can also send me an email or reach me on Instagram. But that is it for this video. So make sure to like, comment, share and subscribe. And of course, as you know, the next step is to track the car. So uh, probably this summer or in the fall, because I know if it's summer, it's way too hot. I don't want the car overheating. So maybe around the fall season, I'm going to track the car in e either Streets of Willow or Button Willow. One of those tracks. That's the next step. But as for now, keep smiling, be safe and always stay driven. Peace.